Jacobs. I'm the desperate DJ. Oh my god. Here. All right. Like, while yeah. we have the recorder yeah. on, yeah. tell the class your boring story uh, of how we got started. Right. When I was in my early 20s, first heard of the Myers Briggs, it was, and I thought, oh, this is really interesting. I, I definitely can kind of see this. And then it wasn't until 2004 that I had my first business. We were selling radio controlled airplanes online, then eventually got onto YouTube and stuff. And I remember the shock of getting what felt like the same email every day from the same guy, but it wasn't the same guy. It was, it was all different guys, but like the way they would write, the, the, the stupid questions they would ask, it was all the same. Started to figure out, oh, these are ISTJs. And that's why they wanted all these detailed questions and all that kind of stuff. I just kind of started to learn the personality stuff to understand the customers, you know, most of the customer support. And they were like, oh, what the hell? Why don't we fuck around with this with sales? We would then experiment doing sales campaigns or, or marketing or, or however we'd set up our website in a more S-I-T-E way, which was just horrible. But the sales would go up. And then after a while, we would get lazy and we would start doing the website and the videos and stuff how we liked doing it with our functions and then the sales would go down. I started to realize there's this whole world here of psychology and objective science and the big five. And, and as I started to listen to the critics of the Myers-Briggs in particular, I noticed that they were very intense and very heavy hitting and very consistent. And they would all kind of say the same stuff. And it took me a while before I could really hear what they were saying because I'm like, screw those guys. Guys, what do they know? What somebody finally explained to me is, if you've got this greatest discovery ever, what happens when you're gone? And it's hard to see that we're kind of holding all this stuff for ourselves, but the majority of the population can't share in it because it's not objective, it's not written down, it's not clear. They're told by the gatekeepers and by scientists that it's bullshit. So it's pretty understandable that 90% of people aren't really going to go along with this. So I naively thought, well, what? <laughs> right here you go why doesn't somebody just prove the functions objectively like how hard can it be through a lot of research i'm kind of skipping a lot here but somebody had helped us figure out how to set up an objective test and what they said is put two different personality operators two different people in, in two different rooms and give them 10 people to type but make sure they can't influence each other and then have them type those 10 people you know whether it's a list of youtube videos or friends or however you want to do it and then compare the results of the two and we're like, oh, okay, well, sure. You know, if you can get nine out of 10, then, you know, you got something here. And how hard can that be? So we gave it a shot. I go in one room and my partner goes in the other. And we have the list of 10 people to type. And we only get four out of 10 the same. And I was like, what the hell? Why are we so good at typing? But then when we do this test, it doesn't work. So we tried again, same result, tried again, same result, tried again, same result. We started to realize that what the scientific community was saying is actually fucking true. This was working for us on a small scale. This was working for us on a personal scale. This is working for us somehow in our sales stuff. But when it was really put to the objective test to pass an experiment, you can't get it to go anywhere. We, we weren't able to give up on it though, because we're like, look, I get it. I'm a biased asshole. I'm, I'm seeing what I want to see. But how are we getting the consistent results we're getting in the sales business? That was the one that really didn't let me throw the whole function thing out the window. We started to, you know, we started following the scientific method. How about that? We defined our terms. We would practice that experiment of putting ourselves in separate rooms and typing and failing, typing and failing, and then going back and redefining our terms. Like, hey, why did you type this guy this type and me this type? What does NE mean to you? And then we would fight it out for a long time until we could triangulate where my understanding of NE and my partner's understanding of NE and the reality of NE and the actual person all got on the same page. Then we started to finally get some results. And then we do the experiment again. Eventually, we could get 5 out of 10 consistently, then 6 out of 10, 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10. And this took a lot of hours, and this took a lot of practice, and a lot of just going around in that circle of test, refine, repeat, test, refine, repeat. All right, do it again. Less boring this time. <laughs>